Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So we do have a lot going on here in the next week or so. We have a Kohler showdown coming soon. That is coming soon. Uh, I just ordered two Kohlers for that, so stay in tune. We do have a surprise um, sponsor, not necessarily sponsor, but a product sample that was sent to me, so that's coming. But today's video is about Ryzen 3 versus Ryzen 5. I've not done this comparison yet. I had benchmarks from Ryzen 3, Intel i3, and G4560. I canned those. I went fresh. I took Ryzen 3 1200, Ryzen 5 1600 at stock and 3.9 gigahertz at 1.425 volts. Caution, that's a little bit warm for early benchmark, and I'm not super worried. I have the Kohler Master, Master Light 120 cooling the chips, doing a fantastic job, mind you. Ambient temperature is pretty cool. But here's what we're trying to answer today. Let's just say your budget's like 1100 or 1200 In that range, you're going to get a Ryzen 5, a GTX 1070, stuff like that. What happens if you back down to a Ryzen 3 and take that $80 to $100 invest it into a GTX 1080? Will you bottleneck the 1080? If so, how much? So that is what this video is about today. Let's take a look. We're going to talk about the specs on this test system. We're going to go right to the benchmarks. So here is the test system. Obviously we're using more than one CPU. We're using a Cooler Master, Master Light 120 AIO. We're rocking an Asus B350M-A motherboard. The Corsair LPX memory, but it would not overclock. A Seasonic M12-2 power supply, 520 watt. The Corsair Spec 03 case and the EVGA GTX 1080 hybrid for the win. I did not go with my Vega because Vega is not really fully tuned. It won't be for months down the road. So this is a much more fair comparison. And the stock speeds are basically what the stock speeds are. And I overclocked the 3.9 gigahertz at 1.425 volts. A little bit higher than what I would like to do. But I just wanted to make sure it's stable to get the results and have no throttling or voltage issues. So let's take a look at benchmarks and let's see how well Ryzen 3 does against Ryzen 5. So you can see that Ryzen 5 did edge out Ryzen 3 both at stock and overclock by really slim margins at 1080p. I ran these tests a couple times and I, I got about the same results. So, you know, the six cores at 3.9 gigahertz definitely pulled off a little win, but it, it's so close it's almost a dead heat. The only difference is Ryzen 3 stock definitely did perform four FPS slower, and this was repeated multiple times throughout my testing. So, right now though, it's not looking good for Ryzen 5, but we have three more games to look at. Now, interesting results here with Rise of the Tomb Raider. Rise of the Tomb Raider liked clock speed a little bit. We saw a 3 to 4 FPS increase going from stock speeds upwards of 3.9 gigahertz. But it really wasn't a lot. This definitely would not push me towards a Ryzen 3 chip by any stretch. In fact, at stock, it was pretty much dead even with the Ryzen 5 chip. So that was actually kind of interesting. It seems like clock speed is a lot more important here than actual core count. So let's see if we start developing a trend here. And Ghost Recon Wildlands is the next one on the chopping block. So this test was quite interesting. The core count made a huge difference. And when actually looking at the performance test, the Ryzen 3 chip used significantly more CPU. And I noticed the GPU usage went down. The CPU was clearly bottlenecking the performance in this scenario. It looks like overclocking once we got the Ryzen 5 didn't really make a huge difference. I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that it boosts up the 3.7 versus the Ryzen 3 only boosting like 3.3 to 3.4. So overclocking really didn't do a whole heck of a lot for the Ryzen 5 chip. The Ryzen 3 chip, however, we definitely saw tangible increases in both 1440 and 1080p because we ran into a CPU bottleneck almost the entire time. We have one more benchmark, and that is where we are bringing back GTA 5. So let's take a look at one that should really give us some interesting results. We're finally seeing some results that really paint the picture that we had expected but in games it's not always about the cpu in fact it's about the gpu more times than not so ryzen 3 at stock 
bottleneck the GPU. As you see, the GPU is bottlenecked the entire time. 1080p and 1440p results being pretty much identical tells us that the GPU is just waiting on the CPU. With Ryzen 5 overclock performing you know, the best six frame rates higher, 5% increase. Uh, stock Ryzen 5 beating Ryzen 3 overclocked by, you know, we're looking at about eight or nine frame rates. We're looking at about a 78% increase. And then Ryzen 3 over stock Ryzen 3, overclock versus stock, we saw a huge increase, 10 frame rates or more. Actually, we're looking at 11 or 12 frame rates. So here we're looking at a 13% increase. So that's good news for Ryzen 3, but we are st starting to find out that the conclusion here may not be as clear cut as I thought it was gonna be, going into this video. As with all my videos, we generally make them for a reason. There's a question, the video has an answer. The question on this video was, when your budget's a little bit over $1,000, you're at Ryzen 5 slash i5 territory with a GTX 1060 or 1070. Now, if when we lower the budget on the CPU down by $80 to $100, that can potentially get you in a GTX 1080 territory. So, the question was, was would a Ryzen 3 really bottleneck a 1080? In some cases, yes. In some cases, no. Two of the four games we tested, it did. Ghost Recon Wildlands was one of them, and the other one being GTA 5. They were both very CPU bound, so much so on GTA 5 that 1080p versus 1440p in almost every scenario were almost within margin of error of each other because the GPU was just waiting for the CPU. And then there's other games like For Honor and um, Rise of the Tomb Raider where it didn't matter. Overclocking gate, a little bit of a bump, but so little it wasn't even that important. So, if you have a bunch of $1,100 to $1,200 and you want to get the most performance, maybe go this route with the idea that maybe you might upgrade to Ryzen 2 in 2018-ish when it debuts, or you can spend some of the money you would have on a Ryzen 5 on other things like maybe a larger SSD, more memory if you're going to be doing some video work, although if you're doing video work, you might want to go to the Ryzen 5 instead. Obviously, a lot of options there. But guys, thank you guys so much. Please stay tuned. We have the Kohler Showdown coming up. Two air coolers and the liquid cooler going head to head. On top of that, we do have our very first product review sample coming from a manufacturer. We'll be getting that soon. As always, guys, like it if you liked it. If you didn't like it, that is fine. Don't hit the like button. Hit the dislike button if you didn't like it. Subscribe. And everything featured in this video over here is going to be available on Amazon and links below. Um, it'll take you directly pretty much to the page of where you can buy this stuff. It does help me out a lot. But as always, guys, this is Steve from PC Budget Solutions, and I'll see you guys later on down the road.